Hey, welcome to Nearly Shores Prepping. I'm your host, Greg. The world is on fire. A lot of fuses are lit. Let's go over them one by one. For the first time, Ukraine has used American-made long-range weapons to strike inside Russia. This was part of the aid package six months ago provided by Congress, approved by Joe Biden, with a promise that American-made munitions would not be used, would not be used to strike inside Russia. They lied. They knew they were lying, and it passed anyway with bipartisan support of the Rhino Republicans, such as Lindsey Graham and others, who want a war with Russia for whatever reason. I have no idea. Putin has declared that to be a red line and will not tolerate it, and has declared that to be uh, an act of war. He has announced that there will be naval war games held off the coast of America, which could go wrong in so many different ways um, that could lead to real big trouble, World War III. France has also announced that they will be sending or considering sending French troops inside of Ukraine to train Ukrainian soldiers to provide munitions to repel the, Soviet, the uh, Russian soldiers. That's another red line that will be crossed and uh, retaliation, I'm sure, will happen from Putin. He's a very serious fellow. He's not stupid. And he knows the consequences will happen. The threat of using nuclear tactical weapons is very real, has been talked about. Putin's proxies on the airwaves have openly advocated the use of nuclear devices inside Ukraine. So far, obviously, that hasn't happened. Could it happen? I'm not, not for sure. But... That card has been played, and we have to look at it. Next, and I have been warning and talking about this for over two years. Israel versus Iran, Hezbollah, and Hamas has been escalating dramatically in these past couple weeks. Joe Biden has betrayed Israel at every turn and has put stipulations on uh, Benjamin Netanyahu to end the attack on a noted terrorist organization called Hamas. So far, Israel has refused to follow any of Biden and the incompetent Anthony Blinken's recommendations and edict, and rightfully so. Israel is fighting for its, its very existence. And Joe Biden and the anti-Semites inside this government, mostly Democrats, are demanding a halt to the extermination of this terror organization, which, by the way, is holding seven American dual citizenships. Hamas is holding its hostages, dead bodies for ransom. They either executed them or they died in captivity. These are innocent men and women that have either died or been executed in Hamas's attack October 7th. The sole purpose of Hamas is to eliminate Jews and the state of Israel. You have idiots, useful idiots, here in the United States with their phony white schmogs covering their heads saying they support Hamas. And I want you to equate this to the Nazi brown shirts of 1933, 34, and 35 who went around in their Nazi brown shirts labeling Jewish stores, organizations banning them from activities 
And this is exactly what's happening on the nation's campuses as you see these phony, idiotic students. Many of them are anarchists, BLM, uh, foreign students from those countries inciting riots on our campuses. So when you see signs from river to sea, that means the extermination of Israel and all its Jews. When they say free Palestine, it's another lie. The only way this will end is if Hamas is completely eliminated with their hundreds of miles of underground tunnels that were supposed to be aid and food to the citizens of Gaza. Instead, they hijacked those food supplies to use it to feed the Hamas soldiers, build tunnels that go into Egypt so they could smuggle arms to build rockets and fight the Israeli soldiers. Israel is ramping up their attack in the Rafah. It's going to come to a dramatic head here shortly, within weeks. There will be a full-scale invasion inside the tunnels and around it, and you're going to see explosions that you've never seen before. Hezbollah in Lebanon has ramped up their rocket attacks into Israel, not by one or two days, we're talking now launching hundreds, which escalates the war on another front in support to uh, Hamas to detract the soldiers from Gaza to the northern border with Israel. It's all by design to make Israel fight on two fronts. Hezbollah is not Hamas. Hezbollah has a standing army estimated to be over 100,000 well-trained, well-armed militia supported and supplied by Iran. Now remember, the centrifuges in Iran are still spinning. And now, even by Iran's own admission, they are weeks away from having enough enriched uranium-grade material to make a bomb. They do have missiles capable of delivering said weapon. Now we are looking at Israel striking inside Iran in those underground bunkers, which would escalate the war even more dramatically. This isn't going to be sending drones in retaliation. This is going to be an all-out declaration of war once Israel feels they are close enough and are about to uh, mount the weapons on these missiles. It's going to escalate dramatically. What's happening to the state of Israel around the world? Well, the Moldavis has declared there is to be no Jews in their country. They have banned any Jews from entering their countries, building businesses or anything else. They are banned from that. You have France banning Jews in Israel from their uh, weapons show, which is an open invitation to the people around, their, their allies around the world to buy that. They have banned Israel from attending said show for, for their France's Defense Department. You see all that going around, and it is escalating reminiscence of World War II pre-World War II. Next, which is even more critical, it appears the worm has turned in favor of Donald Trump at the moment. And this is why we are in an extreme dangerous period of time. And this is in my opinion. Donald Trump is, has been convicted in a kangaroo court. It will be appealed and it should be overturned, I can't say for sure, because the lawlessness in the Department of DOJ is unbelievable and so deep-rooted. I don't know how 
Trump is going to, when he wins presidency, if he wins it, is going to clean out the Department of Justice. However, the appeals court in Georgia has put a halt to the farce trial down there with that Fannie Willis and everything else after they're investigating to find out what exactly went on with her uh, boyfriend slash lover, whatever, prosecutor going after Trump. The appeals court says, I smell a rat, and let's find out how deep that goes. So that has been put on hold, which the Democrats were counting on to jail Trump. That has been put on hold till after the elections. Jack Smith, the notorious thug and liar, the appointed uh, investigator, prosecutor, is now on hold as well. The judge has said, wait a minute, let's take a look at exactly what you have done and what you are doing by, muni by manipulating the uh, Florida case records and photographs with the FBI, with the help of the FBI. They are also looking at, his, was he appointed legally, which many constitutional scholars say no, he wasn't, and it's all coming down through the appeals court that lawfare is not going to be working at this point to convict Trump and get him off the campaign trail. They weren't counting on that. The reason why now I say it's even more dangerous is they were counting on having Trump in jail or in prison or home confinement. Now that that's backfiring through the cases, other than the New York case, what are they going to do about Trump? You see the press now turning on Trump with uh, magazine articles and newspaper articles saying that he is cogn cognitively impaired and behind the scenes, hidden from the public, the guy's an incompetent fool, which we all know and see so could just tell. What are they going to do? Are they going to initiate World War III to keep that commander-in-chief, the incompetent fool, in the White House? Are they going to assassinate or attempt to assassinate Trump so he can stay in the White House? Are they going to remove Biden after he fails his debate with Trump and are they going to replace him at the Democratic Convention which by the way is going to be held over the internet because of the anarchist in the white schmog saying we're going to protest the DNC convention so the cowards that they are are going to do it over the internet and uh, live show instead of actually having real people there we are in an extremely dangerous time for America. Censorship has ramped up around the world. One initiative just failed in Australia to censor opposing views on their government. They actually were going to censor opposing views and videos in opposition of the Marxist government installed down under. And that initiative failed, thank goodness. At least some Australians have, have a common sense to say, wait a minute, you can't shut us up because we oppose what this government is saying. You guys better wake up. They tried the same thing in New Zealand. And fortunately, those people woke up and kicked that idiot woman out of office and get some common sense as to what's going on down there. No, we are in very dangerous times, folks. We are in very dangerous times. Joe Biden is a vicious old man, and their administration has absolutely no regard for the Constitution. You see it across the board all the time with illegal immigration and open borders. And by the way, you're going to see your hospitals collapse like dominoes across this country because they cannot sustain being in the whole 600, 700, 800 million dollars a year treating illegal immigrants with all their uh, illnesses.
and not being reimbursed by the government. You are going to see hospitals collapse like dominoes across this nation. Things are come, going to come to a head, and we are in extreme dangerous times with immigration, world war, the saboteurs here in the United States waiting for their cue to start setting things off, the collapse of our medical system, and it will collapse. Crime on increase dramatically. All I have to do is look in New York. Two police officers were shot by an illegal Im immigrant, arrested 29 times and released by this Biden office. There's no respect for our law. We have to be prepared. You have to be prepared. Food, water, shelter, long-term food, growing gardens. I've done several videos showing what I'm doing in my backyard. I haven't found a recipe yet for grass that makes it taste good. So start building raised beds. Feed yourself good, healthy, nutritious food. Whether it's in a pot, raised bed, whatever, tilling your backyard up and raising vegetables to feed your family. I suggest you get busy and do it. Just like World War II, Victory Gardens. It's enough to supplement what shortages can and will occur. Thank you very much for liking and subscribing. I went a little long, but it's very important that you understand the world is on fire around us. The propaganda networks are not showing you the truth. We are in deep, deep trouble, and they're covering up for that idiot in chief. Get yourself right with God. Take this time while we're in relative peace to make amends. Ask for forgiveness for your sins. Get baptized, submerged in water in the name of Jesus Christ or Lord Jesus only. There's only one God. Thank you for liking and subscribing to Aries Prepping. I appreciate you. Thank you.